There's um, a way to be a good shopper and a way to be a less than shopper. Well, this is my favorite store. I trust them. And that's the thing to look for wherever you shop, to know who's buying the produce and to know about um, whether they're truthful in labeling it. Uh, one thing that I'd like to put people onto is reading stickers. Uh, here's some gorgeous thin-skinned bell peppers and it's really important for them to be organic if you can. But how do you know that they're really, really organic? Um, you would look for a sticker. The st sequence on the sticker begins with nine for organic produce. It begins with four for conventional produce. It begins with six for GMO produce and we won't find any of that here. So this is just an extra way of finding out and making sure, although everything here is very clearly labeled. There is a whole category of fruit and vegetables that really should be organic. The top 50 vegetables and fruits that we in this country consume. We just buy them when we go to the grocery store. And then the next 50 are a little bit more exotic, but the top 50 have in this list, which we're gonna link you to, the top 10 of those 50 are imperative to buy organic. They include celery, bell peppers, peaches, things that have really thin skins. If they're not organic, what will happen is that a very thin skinned fruit will just absorb a lot of pesticides and you'll never be able to get rid of them no matter how much you scrub them. So you need to start with an organic thin skinned fruit. Now if we look at bananas, bananas don't have to be organic. Those are incredibly well protected. Conceivably, it's a waste of your money to buy an organic banana. Uh, the same thing for avocados, they're very well protected. You don't have to pay that extra dollar to buy an organic avocado. I suggest getting really, get, committing this list to memory or printing it out of your computer and just going everywhere with it. And you'll know a lot just from, just from slowly going by it. Uh, down at the uh, bottom of the list is the, ten, uh, the list of 10 fruits and vegetables that don't really have to be organic. The middle 30 in descending order of importance, whether they're organic. Get used to going out with this list and learn it and your shopping um, and your decisions about what to pay for and how much will all come together a lot better. You'll see where you can save some money and see where it's not a smart idea to. Now when you're looking at potatoes, those are thin skinned. Those need to be organic if at all possible. Broccoli is also uh, right out there willing to receive a pesticide and you want to be sure that your broccoli is, is rinsable and as pure as you can get it when you eat it. The list makes perfect intuitive sense. You can begin to get a feeling for which vegetables are too thin skinned to bear up under all that pesticide and which are not. And this is a wonderful small laboratory for looking at all the right things. You can buy citrus fruit that is not organic. It's gonna be fine. You can buy sweet potatoes that are organic. Those are, uh, those are much better if you, if you get them organic. Once you start working as a personal chef, you're on a big learning curve. You should know a lot already, but you're going to learn more and more and more. Now, a good part of my clientele has severe food allergies and intolerances. Uh, the last thing they need in the mix is chemicals that will never wash off. And I worked in this business a long time before I knew that rinsing your vegetables carefully was not enough. So you gather the knowledge you need as you as you go through life and as you go through your work. Um, perhaps 15 years ago, nobody asked me to do organic. Lately, that's all they want and that's all they should be eating. This papaya is innocent and beautiful, um, but papayas are among the most common genetically manipulated organisms there are in a grocery store. Pineapples, it's not that important because you cut most of a very heavy um, outer layer off and the inner layer is just fine. The pesticides haven't gotten that far. But this was a big revelation to me uh, within the last five years that um, there was simply no way to rinse non-organic foods clean. They had to have natural resistance to pesticides in the form of very thick skins. So as you go through the store, shop that way. Spend, spend uh, a little more money on thin skin things, a little less on thick skin things, and that's just a, a very good metric for making the best use of your time and money. Well, pesticides are associated with many ills. The 
first of them is that you're putting toxins into your system on purpose with, with every bite you eat. That can affect you, uh, it can be a hormone disruptor, uh, meaning your master gland will not work right. Um, your um, many other kinds of hormones can be disrupted. It can affect fertility. It can affect uh, well-being. It's going to be very, very inflammatory. Anytime you put a toxin in your body, there will be inflammation. Inflammation opens the gateway to all kinds of diseases, to arthritis, to cancer. Uh, you want to eat non-inflammatory foods. If possible, you want to eat foods with a lot of color, like the papaya, this gorgeous color, berries that are just that gorgeous range of purple to blue to bright red. If it's got a lot of color, it's good for you. But if it's organic and it's got a lot of color, it's really good for you because you're missing out on the pesticides. Herbs are extremely alkalizing. I'm glad you asked about that. Alkalizing to your system means building up your natural defenses against arthritis, against cancer, against many, 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 many diseases that you really don't want and you can uh, drive them away by eating them. If they have antioxidants, that's great. But when we think of our bodies, everything that we eat, everything that we take in at all is a little bit acid or it's a little bit alkaline or it's very alkaline and very acid. And pretend this is the, the field of positive and negative numbers in math. They converge towards zero. So there's nothing that you can eat that's a little bit alkaline and a little bit acid. What the acid that we take in does um, is to create an ash in our system that uh, tears down our natural ability to fight off just exactly those diseases we don't want. If our system is alkalized through a lot of herbs, most spices too, really dedicate yourselves to herbs and spices. That's a big alkalizing step to take. People who are looking at these things right now, and it's a kind of vanguard approach to what to eat and why to eat it, they are recommending that alkaline foods take up about 70% of your diet, and acid, acid bringing foods take up about 30% of it. So, to be simple, the alkalizing foods are plants, uh, fruits, vegetables. The feast foods are, the, the acid producing foods are grains, meat, alcohol, cheese. So, as a daily thing, you want to lighten up on those foods. Don't, don't, ha don't eliminate them, just make sure that they're not more than 30% of your diet on a given day. More alkalinity in your diet. Um, yes, naturally dark green vegetables. Uh, fruits like melons, even citrus fruit. A lime is a very alkalizing thing. It's kind of paradoxical. You think that's citric acid, but it's not. It's the ash that it leaves in your body that counts. Um, so if you would switch out um, the most alkalizing fruits for the least alkalizing, you'd be winning already. If you would um, use lentils instead of animal protein, you'd be getting a 100% protein hit. You would not be missing out. And you would be eliminating a lot of acidifying of your system. Well, everybody should get as much turmeric as they can. I'm glad you asked about it. It's uh, getting to be a really important uh, and delicious weapon. Um, I sometimes feel like I'm putting my clients on a South Asian diet just to give them more. But one thing you can do if, you, if a curry is not for you, if um, that whole part of um, the world is, does not have cooking that charms you, with as little as a half a teaspoon of turmeric a day in something, in a green drink, in a soup that you've made, just something, you can have uh, all the best protection there is. I get mine in green drinks. I make a green drink by putting a banana with a few leaves of kale, with a few grapes, with some fresh ginger, and a half teaspoon of turmeric. It's delicious. If you want to throw in a few kumquats, do that. You will have had your MDR of turmeric, which will help you fight uh, all kinds of painful complaints, re reduce arthritis symptoms. It will reduce your potential for developing cancer. It's a phenomenal anti-inflammatory. It's cheap and it's easy. Oh, well, this is a wonderful source of mushrooms. Uh, shop for your mushrooms here. These are Japanese mushrooms, maitakes and shiitakes, and they are organic 
and they are gorgeous. There's almost nothing you can do that's as alkalizing as to eat a mushroom. Uh, put it in a salad, roast it, do anything with it. It doesn't have to be a big deal, but it's a phenomenal thing to do for yourself. And this is a marvelous place to buy them. These are, are beach mushrooms. These are trumpets. These are mitakes, uh, which are kind of related to shiitakes. And then here are shiitakes, uh, organic shiitakes, which are simply gorgeous. And the old standby, the cremini mushroom, which is the most flavorful mushroom to cook with if you are doing Western cooking. Now, what about portobellas? Oh, they're marvelous. I think we have, uh, well, we don't have a very big one today. Sometimes we have enormous portobello mushrooms here, the size of a butter plate. Uh, one very friendly thing to do for yourself is to simply buy a portobello mushroom, braise it with a little bit of vegetable stock and some garlic, and eat that. It will be perfect. It will be enough. It'll be like having a steak for dinner. Um, people who research a taste called umami, which is the fifth thing that we can tell with our tongues other than sweet, sour, and all that, have said that the mushroom embodies umami and helps people who want to steer themselves towards a vegetarian diet to really stay with it because it's really tasty like meat and it's very satisfying. Now you speak about taste and the five different senses that we have or the five different tastes that we have. Could you elaborate on that? Well, the, the different tastes that we can experience, they all reduce to sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. For, which is Japanese for delicious, to, for really, really yummy. And um, umami is a late discovery. Meat has it. Um, mushrooms have it. Uh, there are a lot of very uh, complex um, vegetable tastes that have it. There, there's a, a beautiful Japanese broth that is purely vegetarian that epitomizes umami. That's what keeps us eating. That's what makes us think, oh, this is good. I don't want to stop. So if you have some an element of umami in your diet and on purpose, you'll really feel you've eaten well. You don't have to eat much. You'll feel you've done a great job, and you'll be cued to put the rest of it away. But you know, we are between seasons, and the um, available fruit will be much more bountiful in a few weeks. Um, what we might want to think about is, are you a locavore? Now, a locavore is a shopper who shops from local farms in season. So a lot of the things you're going to buy, like papayas in Massachusetts, are not local, local produce. They come from very far away. We have a very hard, short growth season in Massachusetts. But the vegetables of the winter, kale, broccoli, any root vegetable, cabbage, and there's so many wonderful cabbages, those are local. And this is Alicia Harris. I'm a personal chef in Cambridge. This is my neighborhood, this is my favorite store. If you want to get a produce education that just won't quit, come shop here. Find out from the people who know the best exactly what's what. You'll be buying from uh, local farms. You will be supporting local agriculture. You will start becoming a locavore, and it'll be your very great pleasure. They have uh, an immensely friendly staff and an immensely knowledgeable staff. It's right in the center of West Cambridge. You can even park. Formaggio Kitchen. It's at the corner of Appleton Street and Huron Avenue in Cambridge, and they are the best. 